Hey, this is Steve with Raybuck Auto Body Parts, and I want to talk a little bit about rust release. It's a uh, rust removing product that we just picked up really recently. Uh, really, really interesting. Um, you guys might be familiar with some of the other products that we carry, like the Zero Rust paint line. That's very similar to Pour 15, and they're actually competing products. Um, with Zero Rust, you clean off, you know, degrees the surface that you want to uh, cover up, get any scaly rust taken off, you know, scrape it off, grind it off of the wheel if you can, and then just paint over it. Obviously clean it and then paint over it. And the Zero Rust is going to uh, encapsulate or seal the rust in. So it's going to cover it up, not allow oxygen to get to it, and not allow the, the rust to, uh, uh, to spread any further. With rust release, it's a rust remover. So what you typically want to do is pour it into a container and then submerge the products into it. Now, these are the smaller sizes, like half gallon and gallon. You can get it in 55 gallon drums or larger sizes. A lot of shops will fill a huge container, either a 55 gallon drum or even a 300 gallon pail, and put a whole product in there. You might put a set of headers in, you could put an intake in there, intake manifold, or you could do a lot of different things with it. It's really interesting because it obviously it's a liquid, so it penetrates, it gets into every little crack, every little groove, and cleans the rust out. It's environmentally friendly. There's uh, uh, no acidic issues to deal with, so if you get it on your hands, it's fine. You don't have to wear gloves. If it gets onto a work surface or a prep surface around it, it's fine. Uh, if you're doing tools or anything else that has different types of metals, it's not going to harm the other metals. It only handles the, uh, um, the, the rust on the, the steel that you're working with. It's really, really interesting. And because it's environmentally friendly, you can dispose of it much more easily than you can with some of the other products that are out there on the market. Um, so again, what you do is you take a bottle of this or a couple bottles, depending on how much you need to treat, put it in a container. I just have to happen to have a stainless uh, tray that I'm going to put it in, and then submerge the items in there. Um, you want to submerge them for at least 15 minutes, but depending on the amount of rust, the severity of it, you can let them sit in there for an hour or a couple of hours or even a day. Um, what you want to do, though, is keep an eye on it because you don't want the items to sit in there too long because the product will eventually turn them black. Once it dissolves the rust that's on the product, it's going to start um, uh, uh, affecting the, uh, the material itself, and you don't want to get to that point. If it does, you can clean it. You can still prime it, paint it, whatever you need to do, but it would be better if you didn't get to that point. Um, it's reusable, so once you remove the products from it, you can put it back in the container and use it over and over again the solution will start to turn black when it's no longer usable. So you'll know. Um, you can use it, it's going to stay about this color, kind of like an off yellowish tint. Um, and then when it starts to turn black, you know it's all used up, the properties in it are all used up, and then it's time to dispose of it and get, some, um, uh, get a new product. For the items that you dipped in it and that you uh, uh, had the rust removed, it's really interesting because you literally just take it out and let them dry. You don't have to hit it with you know, any sort of uh, you know, baking soda or uh, any neutralizer or anything like that. There's no additional prep or cleanup. You literally just take it out, set it aside, let them dry, and then as soon as they're dry, they're ready to go. You could either leave them as is, like for some of these tools, you would just leave as is or maybe hit it with a coat of oil. Um, or if it's a product for you know, one of the cars, maybe paint it. Um, you, know, you could prime and paint it. But that's it. There's no other prep work, no other cleanup work. It's super easy to use, uh, and I'm going to demonstrate it. So I'm taking this. This is the uh, liquid. It also comes in a gel format. So if you're doing like a chassis or something that you can't take off, or it's a large item that you can't put into a container, there is the gel. I will say, and the manufacturer also says, the liquid works much better because you could submerse it, uh, whatever it is, into it. Um, the gel still does a pretty good job, but the liquid is the way to go. Um, we haven't tried it yet. I asked the question, can you take the liquid and just spray it on an item, say you were doing a chassis. They said you can, but it's going to probably be a similar uh, output as what the gel would do. At least the gel is a little bit thicker than this, and it'll stick where uh, um, the liquid is just going to want to run, and you're not going to get good penetration out of it. So I'm just taking this. I'm going to dump it into my container here. Okay, we're good. Again, you dip your fingers in it. It's fine. It doesn't do anything to them. Um, one of the things I'm going to submerge in it, I got this old Model T jack that's been sitting around for a while. I was debating on what to do with it. It is, if you can see it, it is pretty rusted. Um, not horribly rusted, just a lot of surface rust. It was sitting in someone's garage for a long time. So I'm going to put this thing in here. Um, actually, I think I'm going to put half of it in so that I can take it out and we can see what one half looks like versus the other half. So I'm going to just submerge um, part of this in here. 
And then I'm going to take some old wrenches. Again, these ones were sitting around for a while. Um, not too, too bad, but they do have some surface rust on them, so I'm going to drop those in there. There's another one. We're going to drop this thing in there. You can probably see there's a fair amount of rust on it. We'll drop that little thing in there. Uh, I got a couple other tools. I don't know if I'm going to put these in. I didn't realize this one has a wooden handle and the square has a wooden handle. Um, it should be fine, but I don't know if I want it to sit in there for a long time. Um, and then we got another tool here. Um, it's got not so much rust on the back, but some rust on the front. We're going to dip that thing in. So again, we're going to let these sit at least 15 minutes. I think uh, the hand tools after probably 15, 30 minutes are going to be fine. Um, I have a feeling that the jack though is going to take a bit longer, uh, probably a good portion of the day or overnight because it is uh, really rusted. So we're going to do that, we're going to take a break, come back to it and I'll pull all this stuff out in a little bit and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, it's been about uh, maybe 40, 45 minutes since I put some of the tools into the solution. So I was going to take them out. Actually, I took one out and I thought, you know what, I tested it, I might as well take the rest out. Um, so the first wrench I took out, all I did was wipe it off. Um, and it actually looks pretty good. Still a little bit of dirty because this solution isn't going to take any grease or dirt off. If you have items that have a lot of grease or dirt, you should degrease it first and then put it in the solution. But if you can see the other side of it, uh, the rust is completely gone. So there is nothing left on there. Just like you, you know, you can see where it was and there's some black marks. Um, but that's it. I'm going to grab one of the other ones. Again, just grabbing it with my fingers. Um, pulling it out. Going to wipe it off. We'll see what it looks like. And again, if I wanted to, if it was a little bit heavier rust and wanted to get more off, I could let it sit in there for a while. Again, that um, um, that jack stand or the jack, sorry, is uh, is going to sit in there for a while because it was pretty rusted. But these hand tools just had some surface rust. I mean, more than what you would normally have. Um, these are pretty old. Just wipe that off real good. And again. I mean, these were pretty heavily rusted for hand tools, um, and I didn't do anything to them. Just stuck them in there, brought them out. You can see some of the black on it, and uh, the rust itself is gone. Let's see what this other one looks like in here. Just give this one a little bit of a wipe down. This one might need to sit in there a little bit longer, but uh, maybe not. Let's see. Yeah, it actually doesn't look too bad. There's still a little bit. This side obviously was pretty clean to begin with. This side had some more rust, uh, heavy rust along the edges here. It took a lot of it off, but um, there's still a little bit more on there. So I'm going to put that one back in and let it soak. And after I had uh, stepped aside, I decided to put the square in, even though it has a brass and metal handle. Um, I thought, you know what, what the heck, I want to see what it does. So that is sitting in the solution right now. And... Uh, yeah, it was a little more heavily rusted, so I'm going to let that one soak for a little while too. So these ones are done. Get, I'm going to give it a little bit longer, and then we'll come back and we'll check on these ones. Okay, it's been about four hours, and I'm pulling the um, square out. You can almost see the color of the fluid coming off of it because of the, uh, <clears throat> the rust. I'm going to just wipe this thing down again like I did with the other ones. We'll see what it looks like. Look like... It took most of the stuff, most of the rust off. Again, this had a wooden handle with some, uh, looked like some brass fittings on it. Um, didn't affect anything there. Actually, here you can see. Almost looks like it cleaned the, uh, almost looks like it cleaned the brass up a little bit. Let's wipe the uh, square itself off. Now this thing was pretty heavily rusted. Um, I really wasn't expecting to get much out of it, but I mean, you could see already the color difference. Like this is the area that I wiped, and this is what I didn't wipe. Let's take that down. And it just keeps, the more I rub, the more it comes off. Yeah, it actually looks, actually looks pretty good for as bad as it was. I said I wasn't really expecting a whole lot. Um, you can see that. I said that you couldn't even really see 
the rivet or whatever, assuming it's a style of rivet that's up in here before. And then the inside of this, that was all just black. And then this was just rust and rust. So that took it right off. I did take this other one out just a little while ago. Um, wiped it off. <clears throat> if you can see it, the little bit of rust that's, or the little bit of markings that are left are mainly just black. Um, it did take everything off. And even the little uh, uh, thumb screw was fairly rusted before. And it no longer is. So the big thing is the jack. I'm going to take this out. I'm going to see if I can get a close-up of this thing. Uh, let's see. I had about half of it sitting in the uh, in the liquid. Let's take a look here. Try to wipe it off so you can get a better view of it. There we go. Get some of that wiped off. Oh yeah. Let's see if we can get a closer view of this thing. It's hard to see with this lighting, but there's actually a line, not the line in the jack, but just inside of that. Here you can maybe see it on the bottom. There's a line going right across here where this side that was in the liquid is down to just the metal and then the, the blackness and then this side is still rusted so that definitely definitely took it off again it's hard to tell with the lighting in here and the reflection but uh, yeah it definitely made a difference this whole inside that was soaking in it and there's a clear line that goes right down here right where it was resting down in the liquid that definitely cleaned it off yeah it made a huge difference now again it's not going to be like blasting but blasting is obviously going to uh, take part of the material off and affect its, uh, I mean, if it's a thin product, it affect its integrity. But uh, again, if you're just looking for general rust removers, this thing is a perfect, this jack's a perfect example. It even got down inside the screw mechanism, it gets into everything. So again, if you want to do an intake or headers or whatever the case might be, just get a bunch of this, dip it in there, let it sit. Those things you might want to sit half a day or overnight or a whole day um, and wipe it off and then uh, that's it, let it dry. Does a great job. I'm going to get ready to put this back in here. Um, if you can see, I'll try to show you what the liquid looks like. You know what, I'll just bring the camera over so you can see it. So there's what it looks like. Not a whole lot different. Um, it did change color a little bit. You can see some of the particles that are floating down in the bottom, but uh, it doesn't look too, too bad. So should be able to get a couple uses out of this. Again, that, most of this I'm thinking is coming from that, uh, that jack. It was really, really corroded, um, and it did take everything off that one side. So, yeah, I'm going to put this back in the bottle, maybe mess around with the other side of it another day when I'm doing some other tools or something else. And, uh, yeah, we use it a little bit more. So that's rust release. If you have any questions about it, you know, feel free, feel free to give us a call, shoot us an email, um, or uh, you know, jump on a chat session. We'd be happy to talk about it. Thanks for watching.